Hey guys, my name is Dean. Welcome to Manful of Yoga. This is a yoga workout for herniated discs. So this is going to help with the pain associated from a herniated disc and also help with bringing your spine back to a neutral position. Do your best, follow along, do the exercises with me and just listen for the proper technique. This is beginner friendly. You don't need any yoga experience or any flexibility to do it. We're going to get started on the ground with a plank. So the plank is a great basic exercise to help you strengthen your core, which is going to help you strengthen your spine. Easiest variation of this is going to be with your hands planted under your shoulders and your knees on the ground. So go ahead and just start there. Make sure your belly button's lifted up and you start to feel the muscles in your abs working. If you want to make this more challenging, you can tuck the toes and lift your knees off the ground, doing your best to make a straight line from your heels to your shoulders. And something to be aware of, people are going to differ, you know, individually. So these exercises might feel great for someone with a herniated disc, and they might not feel great for other people with a slightly different situation. But for the most part, these exercises are overwhelmingly helpful for people uh, with herniated discs. This workout that I'm giving you comes from a physical therapist uh, inspired program that I developed with physical therapist. So uh, this is stuff that you will use if you go get treatment from professionals. All right, 10 more seconds here. I did that really long talk so that I could distract you while you're doing the plank. <sighs> All right, and then relax your knees down. From here, we're going to move into a tabletop. This exercise that we're doing now is called a bird dog. Really good for strengthening your core and also for addressing the root cause of herniated discs. Go ahead and extend your left arm out, reach it out in front of you, turn your palm to face up, and then kick your right leg straight back. Now here, we want to make sure that your belly button stays lifted toward your lower back. You don't want to just let your belly droop and you're arching your back. So try to keep that sp the spine neutral, just like you had it when you were, you were in that plank. Press your right heel back, flex your toes toward you, and really reach that left arm forward and up. It also helps to squeeze your right hand and your left knee toward one another. Breathe in and out of your nose. That's just going to help you control your body and hold the pose for a longer time. And we're going to be here for 30 seconds. If you need a break, you're welcome to put your hand down, welcome to put your knee down, and then come back into it with when you're ready. But try to hold it for the full duration. 10 more seconds here. Stay nice and long through your body. Make sure you're looking straight down, pressing your head away from your torso. And then release. Okay, same thing, opposite side. Extend your right arm forward, palm facing out or up. And then kick your left leg straight back, flex your toes toward you, press your heel away from you. And it helps to look back at your belly button here and make sure you're making a straight line with your body. Belly button pulls up toward your lower back. That way you make sure that you're using your core and you're not relying on your back to hold this. Back strength is really determined by hip strength and core strength. So you're gonna be focusing a lot on your core, your abs, and your hips in this workout. Again, 30 seconds here, same thing, opposite side. Hug your left hand and your right knee toward one another for a little bit more muscle activation. You might start to feel your muscles shaking. That's a good thing. It means those muscles are strengthening. And I know I talk a lot, but the point is to make sure that you're doing the exercises properly, because if you're not, you're not going to get the benefit. Last five seconds. All right, and then release. Okay, from here we're going to go down flat onto your chest for some prone strengthening. And prone just means lying on your chest. So I want you to lie down best you can. If you have a belly or it's just difficult to lie on your chest, you can use pillows, you can use um, props like that to make it more comfortable. But do the best you can. Bring your hands kind of right under your shoulders or below your shoulders, elbows in tight to your sides. Look straight at the ground. 
and then extend your legs back. So reach your legs back as far as possible. Zipper your legs together, so big toes squeezing together, inner thighs pressing toward one another. Squeeze your thighs so your knees lift off the floor. And then just lift your head off the ground about two inches. And this is a really basic but really good exercise for strengthening your spine and strengthening your core. And keep in mind, with a herniated disc, the issue is that you've rounded your back too much. You spend too much time sitting. Um, generally, that's, that's the biggest cause. So we want to do the exact opposite of that. So getting into this shallow back bend is a really good way to counter that. We're going to do this for 20 more seconds. So pick an intensity that's manageable, but is still challenging enough that you have to work hard to hold it. Try to breathe in and out of your nose. That's going to help you hold this exercise for a longer time. By the way, you can do these exercises every day. And if you're looking for more structured programs, that is exactly what I do with my app and my website at manfulyoga.com. All right, go ahead and release. Take a little break here so you can relax your arms out in front of you. Relax your head down. Give your back a little break. If you need to, you can come up into a tabletop position just to kind of rest. And we're going to get right back into it with more exercises. Make sure you stick around to the end. I'm going to show you a lot of really helpful exercises in this quick video. All right, back onto your chest. And then from here, we're going to do exactly what we just did, but add in scapular retractions. So squeezing your shoulder blades together. So again, extend your legs back, squeeze your thighs, zipper your legs together, and then lift your chest just slightly off the ground. Using your core strength, you don't want to push up. You're just using your core strength and your hip strength to lift slightly. And then from here, I want you to squeeze your elbows as high as you can toward the ceiling. They're not actually going to get that high. And then release them back to the ground. And you're just going to do 10 of those, squeezing your arms up, squeezing the elbows up, lifting slightly, and then releasing down. So these reps like this, this is a really good way to help you build strength in your core and in your back. And as you're doing this, you should feel those muscles in your back tightening and getting sore, <coughs> but you shouldn't feel any pain. If you do feel pain, don't go as high. <coughs> All right, a couple more. Again, going up to 10 here. <sighs> and then again, take a little break. So arms out in front of you, relax your head down. If it feels good, you can come up into a tabletop position or even try out a child's pose. Child's pose is going to feel good for some people, and it might exacerbate that pain associated with the herniated discs and other. But goal here, keep your back neutral. Make sure you're not rounding it. So you want to think always keeping the front of your lower torso nice and long, just like you'd have it in a plank. All right, one more exercise on your chest. Go ahead and lower back down. Again, extend your legs back. Zipper your legs up. Squeeze your thighs so your knees lift. And then I want you to use your hands to pull your body forward. Look just slightly forward. Don't crane your neck, but I just want you to look slightly forward. And then squeeze your elbows toward one another. So pulling the shoulder blades together and down. And then use your hands to just slightly pull yourself a little bit higher. Pull your chin in toward your throat. Only go as high as you can without pain. And you're going to do 30 seconds here. If you need a little break, come down a little bit. And then come just a little bit back up. Again, you don't want to go as high as you possibly can here. It's more about holding here, being able to control it, being able to, f <laughs> being able to breathe somewhat normally and not having pain as you do it. Last 10 seconds. Keep your legs strong. So really squeezing your thighs, squeezing them together, squeezing your abs, and then relax. <sighs> all right. Go ahead and take it onto your back. This is going to feel really nice after all of that. And I'm going to show you one more exercise on the floor that's really, really going to help. And you can also do this at the end of the day to help with resetting your spine and getting rid of back pain. So plant your feet in front of your hips, squeeze your abs nice and tight, and then push down through your feet, squeeze your butt muscles, and then lift your hips off the floor 
into a bridge. So you really want to feel your glutes working here. If you don't feel those muscles automatically turning on, you can do a little march like you see me doing here, just one leg at a time. And that's going to help those muscles start to activate. <laughs> but we want to strengthen the hips here. You should feel your back working. You should also feel your abs working. If you want to make this a little more intense, squeeze your butt more, press down through your feet, and drive up higher. Just want to make sure that you don't go to the point where you're only using your back here and arching up really high. I'd prefer that you make sure that you're working your, your hips and building that strength in your hips, keeping your abs nice and engaged, and just getting a moderate arch. That's going to be more helpful than just pressing up as high as you can and, uh, and trying to be higher than whoever would be next to you if you were doing this in a group class. Continue to breathe in and out of the nose. This is one that we should work up to doing for 60 seconds. You might not be able to do that yet. If you do have pain in the back, again, you can release down, take a little break, and in general, focus on getting more uh, muscle in your hips, your glutes, your hamstrings, and your abs working, and that's going to take the strain out of your back. Got about 15 more seconds to go here. And this is one of those exercises that you can do every day. It's good for building strength, but it's also good for relieving pain. <sighs> All right, and then release. Okay, if it feels good, I want you to bring your knees in toward your chest. And if it doesn't feel good, then don't pull them in that much. You can keep your knees kind of above your hips, so kind of in, in a 90 degree position here. And hopefully that feels good. If you want, you can also kind of just move your legs from side to side. And that's also a really good way to get rid of lower back pain. So to keep working on this, you want to do these exercises on a regular basis, at least three times per week. And daily is better. If you can do about 10 minutes of this stuff um, every day, that's going to really help with the symptoms of a herniated disc. It's also going to just help you get back to being able to do what you do uh, with less pain, less discomfort. And again, over time, most herniated discs do repair themselves within a year. So um, please don't resort to surgery without trying to do some exercise-focused uh, recovery first. Um, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching this video. Please like it, comment, uh, um, subscribe to Manful Yoga if you haven't already. Um, and again, the best way to work on this is going to be by following a program. And that, that's exactly what I do on my website and my app, Manflow Yoga. Um, thanks for watching this, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.